Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to an on-the-couch episode of the Share.Care podcast. Our belief is that global peace starts at home. Feeling safe, valued, and heard gives you a foundation to confidently step out and make the world a happier and safer place for everyone. Because in today's world, it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. What I want to talk about today is I'm my background is is Polish, most of Polish, uh, Ukraine, and a little bit of Russian. So I'm a combination of of all those three, and with the invasion of Ukraine that's happening at the moment, I often get asked, what do I, what do I think about that? And it's, it's an interesting topic to talk about, especially in today's world and, and the modern world, uh, because also I, I have a military background as well. I was posted uh, to the, I was in the Australian Army and I was posted to the SAS. So I spent a lot of time with the special forces doing um, lots of exciting things uh, as part of that, um, as my service to the country. And so when I think about, you know, I mean, war itself is not, no one wins a war at the end of the day. Uh, it's, it costs a lot of resources and the achievement that used to happen from war isn't relevant today because back when um, uh, throughout history, I mean, part of what was the reason for war was was a, co- a lack of resources. So one country to get more of something, one country would invade another country, or one one province would invade to get those resources, and. And that's how it expanded. As as it was a, a zero sum game, so one you know one would expand, the other one would contract. Some people would have a lot, um, other people would be missing out. And today's world is a little bit different because we've progressively changed. And this is where I think about you know from that perspective. We look at uh, I always find it interesting, and, and I am a bit of a Star Trek fan. So I you know talking about you know the warrior race, the Klingons, uh, and so that background and, and thinking about that, and we look at you know in history there were, were cultures that have that that warrior warrior culture, and I think the shift from that being a viable option probably happened well really stood out in World War Two uh, because you know we had a number of um, well the kamikaze pilots were one that stood out now in Japanese uh, was uh, um, had a, a warrior culture to it um, there was nobility in in the battle and and. You know, dying in battle, and that's where I look at my own military service and notice the difference because there, there was this honor um, you know, coming from the, the the Klingons as well, this honor of dying in battle, which isn't what we were taught when I was in service. You know, we were taught, you know, don't die for your country, make the other person die for theirs. And when we think about that, I mean, look at, put that in history and come back to World War II that I was talking about before us to that turning point. We're going, well, what, what happened there? Well, we had the, the Japanese kamikaze pilots. Now, that were, you know, obviously when the Japanese Air Force that struck fear into people that, you know, knowing that these pilots were likely to fly into the ships um, or their targets uh, and sacrifice themselves to do that. So it does have that fear factor, that, that warrior fear factor. Um, does that succeed? Well, it didn't, obviously, because we know how the, the war turned out. 
But when we look at it too, from the bigger picture of things, I want to compare that. Um, and off the top of my mind, I can't remember what the aircraft, the Admiral's name was, but there was a, a mission that the Allies were flying from an aircraft carrier to the islands and they only were just in range. So the pilots were taking off um, knowing that they may not have enough fuel to make it back. And to add matters, uh, as it turned out worse, was when they took off, it was daylight. But when they were coming back, it was night. So they're running out of fuel and you know, it, trying to find their way back to the aircraft carriers. And it's not like today when you had all the radar and being able to work out GPS where you are. They, they didn't have any of that. And when the planes were coming back, the Admiral was aware of that, that they, they may not be able to land because they might not be able to find their way back. And he ordered the fleet to turn on all their lights. Now that, from a tactical point of view, you know, that, that's just ludicrous. You're lighting up exactly where you are. You're letting the enemy know this is where you are and you become a target. What that did, though, was it enabled all those pilots, or the majority of those pilots, I'm sure some didn't make it, I can't remember the, the numbers, but it enabled them to find their way back much easier and land safely. And that's the difference when we talk about, okay, this, this um, invasion force. It's like these people, this warrior race, they sacrificed themselves. What were they doing by that? Yeah, they struck a little bit of fear, but they're eliminating their key resources. Those resources were gone. It's not easy um, to make a human being, grow that human being, train that human being, and then have that human being continue on. That takes a lot of time. When you're talking about you know, people that, you know, it, you know, you, I mean, if you send someone in at 15, it's still 15 years. But then when you're looking at someone who's a, you know, a specialist, you know, good at what they do, you know, they become um, much, much more valuable resource. And that was shown in, in a number of dogfights later in, in World War II where the Japanese were sending in people that ha were barely trained and not able to, um, to, to fight very well against people that had a, were battle-hardened, had a lot of experience, and were taken care of, i.e. turning the lights on on your fleet so that they could make it back. So they had no chance of winning. And this is when we are talk, looking about the, um, the war in Ukraine, similar sort of thing. It's in today's world, you cannot send an invasion force without people knowing about it. Now, we knew months in advance that Russia was building up, well, it wasn't Russia, um, I think we need to distinguish between uh, the leader who is doing this and the people. I'll talk about a bit more about that later. So when Vladimir Putin was building up forces on the borders of Ukraine, we all knew about it. You can't hide that kind of thing in today's world. We knew it was going to happen. We knew likely you know, what, how it was going to happen because this um, battle strategy, and this is, again, where we have the, these resources, this warrior mentality, let's kill off all our great people. It make, doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and this is where also, too, where you have the dictatorial attitude where you, they hear only what they want to hear compared to an open attitude of listening to what the information is. So they've got forces building up around Ukraine. The uh, Ukrainians know that's happening. They can plan for that and go, well, what's the likely strategy? Well, the, the common strategy is you know, the blitzkrieg type attack where you go straight, straight through. Well, if we know that's going to happen, how do we do that? Well, blitzkrieg requires... Um, a lot of resources following it up. So let's let the tanks run through and then destroy all the stuff that comes forward, comes afterwards. So let's just hide to the side, let the tanks roll through and then and blow up all the, the resources to support that. And then we have the, the YouTube videos of, you know, a, a Ukrainian uh, driving past a tank offering to tie him back to, to Russia. Um, and this is where we want to understand the shift that we have. In today's world, we're no longer in a zero sum game anymore. And what's the difference? Well, the difference is innovation, which is what I was talking about before. This whole, you know, we are, you know, there's a limited amount of resources. 
what makes a bigger pie is innovation. We can do more with the same amount of materials. And that's where you know, that started with the Industrial Revolution. We started to be able to do more rather than just, you know, agriculture. We had one person with a, um, a, a bore, you know, pulling a, one plow. Um, somebody invented a tractor and was able to do much more with less and then produce much more with less. And from that innovation side of things, we look at it too. Like we look at the, the, um, the invasion of Ukraine. We go, well, what's happened there? What's different this time? What's different this time is we're approaching it with a more world um, attitude towards it. It's probably not the right terminology, but what I mean by that is looking, going, okay, you know, w when it first happened, I was like, oh, you know, me personally going, because I've got family over there, I was like, oh, let's go and, you know, bomb their things, which escalates the, uh, the, the fighting, and which is, you know, um, what happened in, in, um, in World War Two, we you know we had you know, that that escalation where we 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 we're going okay, let's intimidate them by by bombing their cities and then they'll submit. Well, people don't submit. That's that's a fallacy. Um, so what they've done differently this time is realize well, let's not escalate it. Let's not let's you know yes, there's been sanctions and things like that, but they haven't done anything that would enable you know the whole lot to escalate. They haven't bombed Russian cities. They've, they've defended and, you know, it's a deliberate tactic to let's not escalate. Let's just push Russia out or push the Russian troops out rather than attacking the resources, which then, to, and that's, a, that's an innovation. That's a different way of approaching it. Let's not escalate the matter. And this is what, what SHARE is really about. Let, let's talk about these things. Let's, let's work together. And... And let's put that investment in growing our, our world. We've got a lot to learn from each. We've got so much more to learn from each other that we can create strength from by learning, oh, how do you do this? You know, that, that's an interesting, rather than looking at what someone does is different and going, oh, my God, that's different and uh, I don't want to know about it. It's like, well, what is going on there? What are you doing? And, and from that, you actually draw strength because you will, you learn from that. You go, well, I can actually take that, combine it with what I've got over here and make something new, which is better for everybody. And that's where that comes from because the more people that are helping society is the better we are all going to be off. So we're going to be, we're going to be better off because if we're helping because we want to make our life better, we're also helping making everybody else's life better, which is the underlying principle of share, that it is in your, in your own selfish best interest to help others because it makes you're making their life better and you're making our life better. And that's when people ask me about the war in Ukraine, yes, it's, it's tragic that people are dying, and, and, you know, but you know, that unfortunately some people will behave in a certain way like Vladimir Putin has done. But we can respond differently in, in, and in a way that actually helps us move forward. So I, I feel very confident about, you know, as we move forward in, in the, the longer term of things, this is a tipping point that we're at where our world is entering a new phase where it's, it's clearly obvious that we don't, as a, as a world, as the majority of people in the world, we don't tolerate um, one country or one person taking action that's going to oppress another person we, we just don't tolerate that and it's very clear i think to other i use the term rogue leaders that this is no longer a way to operate we need to work together we need to find those commonalities there is enough for everybody and by working together collaboratively we can solve the problems and make a better world for everybody. Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper. You're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you.